and the Holy Spirit beside you will be so exciting because you'll hear him remind you of things. The more you're calm, conversations with Christ become more clear to you. The more you're calm. Your calmness is an invitation for God to explain himself to you. Your calmness is an invitation for God to explain himself to you. The Holy Spirit is beside you. He's the invisible Jesus, an invisible man walking beside you. And he talks to you all the time. He reminds you of things that you, you need to stay encouraged. He reminds you of things that you need to stay excellent. He always has a solution in a situation that seems unorthodox, unusual. He gives you intelligence constantly so that you could be stretched. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to walk on the water. Because if you never experience instructions that make you uncomfortable or paths that make you uncomfortable. You will remain natural. You'll never move in miracles. You'll never work miracles. The Holy Spirit will make you a miracle worker, will make you a miracle worker in your own life, make you a miracle worker in the lives of others. The Holy Spirit will give you insight to what King Jesus was talking about in the Bible. The Holy Spirit will keep on speaking to you about scriptures. The Holy Spirit will take over your tongue while you're praying. You'll find yourself praying in an unknown tongue. Even to pray in tongues, it requires boldness because your flesh will tell you that you're not making sense. But you don't want to make sense. You want to make surrender. You want to make submission. You want to make saying yes to God possible. The Holy Spirit will cause you to slow down so that you do things correctly. You don't want to move so fast that you're just doing things because you know that you have to do it. You want to make sure that you do it right. People that go into a store create a grocery list because a grocery list is is a Holy Spirit idea. You could go inside of a store or you can go to a restaurant and forget what you came to order. You can forget the exactness. The Holy Spirit not only will give you excellence in how you operate, but he'll also show you the lack of excellence in others. Sometimes you'll have to check what others are doing because sometimes people don't pay attention. You could tell someone that you want ketchup and they don't give you no ketchup. You can tell someone, I want a drink without ice and they give you a drink with ice. Do you know how many times in my life that I've had to tell someone I, I, I said I wanted this, you gave me this. I remember one time I had got some shoes and I was talking to the man and the man said, yeah, this is the size of the shoes. And I trusted the man. The Holy Spirit said, that's not the size. He picked the wrong shoe size inside of your bag. Go check your bag. Do you know I went go check the bag? It was the wrong shoe size. The Holy Spirit says, son, he not paying attention. He not paying attention. He not paying attention. If I would have had trusted him, I would have had the wrong shoes and never thought about it. I would have had some big old boats on my feet walking. Big old boats, big old ships. Because even you have to check the accuracy of others. And people that are not accurate are not always evil. But evil takes over the situation so that they can miss something that's needed. Inaccuracy doesn't mean that someone is wicked. 
But wickedness can take over in a moment. So it can twist something that needs to be done. In this generation where people smoke weed and they do drugs and they're on pills and they're on all type of things, you really have to check for accuracy. You have to be diligent that things are the way that you 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 spoke it to be. You have to make sure. Because someone will tell you, hey, you know, you got all your burgers It's OK. And you have to check to see. Yeah, that's the chicken salad that you asked for. Yes, that's the that's the crouton salad that you asked for. And you got to check and see that is actually the crouton salad. You have to check. If you ever go anywhere and someone says yes is in the bag, check the bag in front of their face. Check the bag in front of their face. I remember even going to banks before and, and uh, you know, you, you, you do a lot in ministry. Sometimes it's something that costs large money and the teller would just give you or, or they'll, they'll just give you the money and they say, this is the exact money. I said, no, count it out, count it out. Because see, it's not their money. They don't, they don't think about it. Why would you give somebody a large amount of money and tell them that it is the right amount? And then you know what happens if you walk out and you got the wrong amount of money? You know what they're going to tell you? You know, you, you, well, well, how could we trust that you didn't have the right amount of money? And, 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 and maybe you just, you just took the money, huh? How I'll do. What I'm telling you is that if you're going to be a person of excellence, you're going to have to restudy re-examine when you deal with business, when you deal with your instructions, you even got to keep on checking up on your children. You got to keep on telling your children, hey, did you eat your food? Did you finish that water? You got to check up on everybody that you instruct. You have to check up on your orders because even children need to be re reminded so that they can finish their assignment. You have to train your children how to be finishers. If you give them a plate of food and they don't eat the food, you may think that's just a plate of food, but that's, what's going, that's what they're going to do in their relationships. That's what they're going to do when they're at a job and they don't like the job, they're just going to leave the plate of that job and say, I'm not eating from this job no more. You got to install qualities of excellence in people now. Do it now while they're while while anybody that you're training, because even a parent, you're training your children. Everybody trains somebody. A wife doesn't train a husband. But a wife trains her children. Children don't train their parents, but children have to train their attitudes to submit to the training of their parents. See, everybody is a trainer. Even a child has to train their self. To have the mental stability to endure, <laughs> to, to endure their parents' rebukes, instructions, corrections. Always remember that the Holy Spirit is going to make sure that you're accurate and excellent. So be calm because he can't speak to you in your anxiety, your frustrations. And your irritation, your impatience, he can't speak to you and you hear him with clarity. Because even wrong attitudes speak louder than the voice of God. Wrong attitudes speak louder than the voice of God. Hurry speaks louder than God's voice when you're hurrying. 
When you hurry, your vision become blurry. You cannot see what God is showing you when you hurry. When you hurry, your vision becomes blurry. You have to keep on looking. Did I do what I set out to do accurately? Your person and it's easy for you to forget. You can go inside of a store and forget that you were supposed to get mustard. Forget that you were supposed to get some detergent. Forget that you were supposed to get some apples. It's easy for you to forget things. Sometimes you have to write things down. It's okay for you to write things down because it's easy for you to forget. Write the vision, make it plain. And always check up if you're dealing with business or dealing with, with some other party and you gave an instruction or you gave a preference, follow up and find out if the preference is there so that you can know what you're working with. If you tell someone, I want, I want two different bags and they give you a bag and they say, I put the other bag in there. No, no, I want two different bags. In this life, you're actually going to have to be calm so that you can get what you're supposed to have. And this is a revelation that calmness is consistency towards your promise. Calmness is consistency towards your promise. So the more calm you are, the more you're saying, I'm going to be steadfast to get what God has for me. Remain calm so that you can hear God talking to you. Remain calm. And Romans 12, 15, I believe it said, rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those who weep. Know with what kind of person you're dealing with. If someone is weeping, weep with them. Don't jump up and say, oh, just be joyful. It's OK. Weep with those who weep. You need wisdom to do all these things because you can weep with someone that weeps and actually make them weep more. So while you're weeping with those that weep, you have to have the wisdom to know how to still be a vessel of strength. So that they can pull strength while they're weeping. So that they can lean on you. And rejoice with those that rejoice. If someone is rejoicing, don't bring them weeping. Because they're rejoicing. Rejoice with them. Celebrate. Don't tell them, oh, well, God did that for me too. So there's really nothing for you to feel excited about. You know, God does that all the time. He does that for me too. Sometimes people are so insecure, they can't celebrate your, your championships. Anyhow, those people are dangerous to your rejoicing. You may lose five pounds. You're trying to lose weight. You lose five pounds. And someone say, well, I lost 10 pounds in just two days. So, um, you know, you just keep on working. You'll get there. You don't want to be around someone. They just destroyed. They just in dis they just destroyed your rejoicing. That's how you got to know what type of spirit you're around. Because people can destroy the happiness of your victory. Rejoice with those that rejoice. And weep with those that weep. When someone is weeping, have compassion on them. 
because sometimes there's a reason why they're weeping. I say all these things, but remember this as well, that the Holy Spirit is the interpretation of every story. The Holy Spirit is the interpretation of every event. And if you calm down, instead of vent, you will know the interpretation of the event. Calm down and listen. Calm down and listen. I've been in many wars in my life. When I say wars, I don't mean wars with myself. I mean wars with spirits. But I never let those spirits decide how I war. A man of understanding is of a calm spirit, the book of Proverbs say. So I don't let the spirits I'm at war with decide how I war. My momentum, my energy, my focus, my reaction, my responses, my vocabulary, my attitude, my And through calmness, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. The Holy Spirit will tell you what was necessary. Remember, David said it was good for me to be afflicted. But I promise you, while he was being afflicted, he thought it was evil. David, through calmness, received the interpretation of the event. There's an interpretation that God gives you for every area of your life. And calmness empowers a conversation with the Lord. Calmness allows God to explain himself to you. Calmness. Calmness allows you to receive a wiser perspective. Three years from now, you will realize what you're doing today may have been vain. Certain things that you had in your schedule was unnecessary. Certain things that you were eating or drinking, certain things that you were doing was unnecessary. I advise all of you or some of you all may work the night shift or. But remember what I said, never drink energy drinks. Never drink energy drinks. You ever see those drinks out of a can and it talks about it gives you energy? Dr Some of you all need to stop drinking that immediately. It'll destroy. It'll destroy your body. It'll destroy your body. It'll destroy your body. It'll destroy your body. Those type of drinks that say that they give you energy and endurance and life. Don't drink those drinks. What I can tell you is that uh, Ensure is good. Boost milk is good. Build up your immune system. Build up your immune system. Those, those are very good. Uh, so you should get insurers. Get insure. Get uh, boost milk. Uh, boost milk is good. And. Get your rest when you can. Get your rest if you can. This body goes through so much because this world is falling. You don't have to sin to get sick. This world is a fallen world. This life is temporal. And enjoy others while they're still here. The days are numbered. Your days are numbered. There'll be a day. When I am no more. Only in the natural but I live forever in the spiritual. I'll never die. 
I'll never see the day of death, literally. But I'll pass from this body. The time is short, anyhow. It's always short because you don't know how urgent an assignment is right now. It's always going to be short. When I say short, there may be 60 more years. But even those 60 years are short. Because of the urgency of the assignment at hand. King Jesus kept saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, is at hand, is at hand. He was saying that thousands of years ago. Imagine that. But whatever God wants done is always urgent and there's always a short time. Samuel tells Saul to kill all the Amalekites. He doesn't kill them. It's a short time. He says, you lost your kingdom. It was a short time. Saul thought, well, I can get it right. It's fine. We'll fix that. You know, I just did. It was a short time. It was at hand. It was at hand. Always make sure you move with the spirit of excellency and check up on other people's excellency. If they tell you that they got two drinks in the bag, check the bag to see if there's two drinks. Don't just take people's word that you never met before and just think that that because some people are not focusing. I don't know if Amazon does a test on their workers because their workers are not all that accurate. I know. But they, they got to stop smoking weed and stop playing loud hip hop music around here. <laughs> stop playing the baby while you're driving and Lil Baby and, and Wheezy F Baby. Drop off the packages where the packages say dog on it. Drop off the packages. It's not that hard. Drop off. They got four, four numbers in all. Quattro. They got quattro numbres, numbre, or numbres, or, or, or I don't know what they call it. We're gonna have to call El Chapo to find out. Call the right numbers out. Speak it out aloud, and drop off the packages where it's supposed to go. Turn that music down because it's intoxicating you. Don't pull up. Don't pull up. Don't pull up. God dang. With no with no Wheezy F baby, little baby, the baby uh, or, or baby uh, Manny Fresh. Don't pull up with 504 boys or none of them. Don't pull up with them. Because they intoxicating you while you're driving. You're dropping off the packages by the Korean looking people across the street. And the Korean looking people, we don't know if they got coronavirus. We don't know if we don't know. We don't know if we being racist or prejudiced. We don't know if they're from Wuhan or they what. Make sure that you drop off the packages at the Korean. I don't think they're giving them a drug test. That's the problem. I think they're not giving them a drug test. I, they got to pee in the cup. Make sure they pee. Make sure they pee in the cup. This, I don't know what they're putting in the cup. Make sure they peed in the cup. And check it. Check it. Check it. Put it through the examination. Check it. Check, check, check for the acid. <laughs> I don't know if they got bubbles or what. What? Check it. Check it, examine it, FBI, investigate, investigate. They investigate, don't just investigate what R. Kelly did. Make sure that they pee, they make sure that that pee is there. They're studying the wrong pee. They did a whole investigation on that pee, but make sure that this pee is Amazon pee, Amazon. Check it, check it. There's a lot of money going forth. You can check the P to find out if the P be of God. Try the P by the P to find out if the P be of God. Try the P. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. 
I'm finished and I'm done. They pit the packages. And sometimes then they they'll bring somebody else's package and drop it on your door. You open up the package, you you see, you see a thong, a thong. Let me finish, a thong sandal. Thank you, thank you. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish. Don't be disrespectful now. Don't be disrespectful now. Don't be disrespectful now. You open up, you're like, what is these thong sandals? I didn't order no thong sandals. You look up there, you see a name like Ruhak. A dash. <laughs> you like, is this the glory realm? Is this a is this from the glory, the Ruach? This is this is it's the Ruach Adesh. I don't know Ruach Adesh. I didn't order no thong sandals, and my name ain't no Ruach Adesh. And you start to see how people are not paying attention to what they need to complete. If they would have paid attention, they would have knew that that wasn't the proper address. But they're not paying attention. The Holy Spirit will bring excellency upon you. And and here's what's powerful. The Holy Spirit will remind you of what you forgot. The Holy Spirit will remind you of what you forgot. The Holy Spirit will remind you of what you forgot. Anybody that's in your presence that you see on a daily basis, love them with all your heart. Love them. If God is telling you to disconnect from someone, fine. But keep this law within you. That whoever God is continually putting in my face, I'm supposed to love them. Love and give all of yourself to love. Because life is short. Here today, gone tomorrow.